Hello, I'm Marguerite Phillips. So welcome to CHS's Professional Communication Podcast, Episode 2. Today's podcast addresses implicit bias in the context of professionalism. First, we have to start with a common definition from which to talk about this. What is implicit bias or unconscious bias, as some people say? According to the National Equity Project website, it's defined as the process of associating stereotypes or attitudes towards categories of people without conscious awareness. And this can result in actions and decisions that are at odds with one's conscious beliefs about what's fair and what's equal. The site also gives a few good examples that illustrates this definition. So for example, the site explains that implicit bias can quote unquote, lead us to make biased and unfair decisions regarding which treatment options we make available to patients. So the first thing that comes to my mind when I read that is maybe a physician assuming that a patient with lower socioeconomic status or with very little formal income says they're in pain, requests pain medication, and that physician decides that perhaps that person is addicted to a drug. That might be something that people would call unconscious bias. So in addition, the website claims that from extensive research, this happens all the time in our schools, in hospitals, in policing, and in places of employment. I wanna couch what I'm saying about unconscious bias and implicit bias with the fact that I think most people are good people who are doing the best they can with what they know. We can't help how we were born. And in fact, I think we should love how we're born. However, sometimes we perpetuate a system that no longer works for everyone. I would say it never worked for anyone. And as our society becomes more and more diverse and we continue to recognize and accept a variety of groups into our society, we need to do something about this. It means we need to be responsible for fixing the thing we didn't create that doesn't work for us. So there are some that would argue that the idea of professionalism itself can be problematic for different groups of people and may even be discriminatory. For example, there's an article by Asa Gray, who is fellowship director at the Center for Ethnic, Racial, and Religious Understanding at Queens College. And she wrote an article entitled The Bias of Professionalism Standards. And this comes from the journal of the Stanford Social Innovation Review. And in this article, and that's the concept of the professionalism standard of being on time, timeliness. I'm gonna read an excerpt and I want you to just think about it. It's something that I don't think we think about enough. She writes, How people manage their time in relationship to work plays a huge role in their success. Research from a 2017 career builder survey in the United States found that 41% of all employees are terminated due to continual lateness to work. A survey of 1,000 workers in the United Kingdom revealed that 23% of them reported being fired for things like doing personal tasks on lunch breaks, going to the bathroom too frequently, or being overly social. However, in a world driven by capitalism, professionalism is based on a monochronic relationship to timeliness and work style. So Asa Gray continues to write, it centers productivity over people, values time commitments, accomplishes tasks in a linear fashion, and often favors individuals who are white and Western. In contrast, polychronic cultures, while still able to get tasks completed, prioritize socialization and familial connections over economic labor. Within black and immigrant communities, there's often a deep ancestral connection to polychronic cultural orientation. Some people of color push against this by adopting a monochronic orientation, but many hold on to their polychronic work style. As a result, they may lose their jobs more often in a culture biased against their norms. So I say all that, and then what do we do, right? What do we do with this information? 
And in my humble and professional opinion, there are three things I recommend. One is to continue to educate ourselves and check in with the members of our organization. Do they feel like they belong? Is the environment a, a psychologically safe one? And then two, have an open mind. Read more. Consider some things that are mundane, regular things that we do in everyday life that might actually be biased. And the third one is understand that some rules are made to be broken. Not all rules apply to everyone. There is a way to be equitable and inclusive while also creating an atmosphere where professionals of all types feel like they belong. Thank you for listening to CHS's Professional Communication Podcast. Look for future episodes soon. Our next topic will be consciousness of self. This is Marguerite Phillips. Thank you for listening.